Let's talk about force diagrams. It's very important to understand how to do this in a regular, orderly way so that you won't get into trouble when you actually start solving Newton's second law equations. So a force diagram, or a free body diagram is sometimes described, you've got a mass and you draw all of the forces that are acting upon the mass. Newton's second law said F is equal to MA. In fact, the net force on a mass is equal to its mass times its acceleration. It's talking about the forces that are working from outside of the object on the object. And what people normally do wrong with this is they start putting in forces that the object exerts on other things. So the way you do a force diagram is you, you first of all you define the object and make sure that you understand what the object is. That's not always obvious. And then you draw in all of the forces that are going from outside onto the object. For instance, the example in the book is the object is a sled, it's sliding around on the ground, and there is a person that is pulling on it with a rope with some sort of tension in the rope. Tension is a force, let's just call it the force of the rope. Okay. Um, there's the force of gravity that pulls down on the object. The force of the ground that pushes up. Uh, and in the example in the book, there's the force of friction that slows this down. Friction is a force, a sliding force that always opposes motion. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put somebody in the cart. I believe this was the, the sled problem. So let's put somebody on top of the cart, sitting on the cart. If I wanted to find out the motion of the cart alone, this person sitting on the cart is not the object I'm going to put in here. So when I draw this diagram, I could get confused by thinking about this person on top. If I've got somebody sitting on top, their effect on the sled, or on the object being pulled, is actually to exert a, uh, exert a force. Let's call that the force of the weight of the person pushing down from above. So if I've got a person sitting on this block, then they exert a force down. Okay, so if I have a sled, I'm towing it along with a rope along the ice. I've got someone sitting on top of the sled. These are all the forces that act on that sled to determine its motion. And I can write that the motion of that sled is given by the sum of the forces equal to its mass times the acceleration. What I normally do is, well, I draw in the vectors like this, and I, all, I keep track of my minus signs by uh, saying that the direction that the vector is pointing in is the positive direction for that uh, force. I'm going to write F is equal to MA in the following way. I'm going to define that the positive direction for the acceleration is that way. Okay. And so I can write that M a is equal to the sum of all the forces, uh, and that would be uh, F rope minus the force of friction plus the force of the ground. minus the force of the weight sitting of the person sitting on top of the sled, minus the force of gravity. Okay? So I would have to take the vector sum of all those forces to calculate the acceleration. Okay? All right, so the first step is let's make sure we understand this. You, when you draw a force diagram, or a so-called free body diagram, you define, make sure you understand what mass is being moved. You draw in all of the forces acting from outside on that mass. For instance, the mass is going to exert a force on the ground, but that doesn't just determine the motion of the mass. Okay. 
Draw your picture carefully, define what the positive direction for each of your forces and your accelerations are, and then you can write down your force equation, F is equal to MA. Alright, now in this particular case, let me go on and, and talk about the next step in this. If I wanted to solve this problem, uh, I realized that the acceleration is a vector. It has two components, an x component and a y direction. So I'll call this the x direction and the y direction, or the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. And so the next step in the process will actually be to take these vectors and resolve those into x and y components. So uh, let's note that some of these vectors are already pointing in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction. And then I've got this one outlier here, the force of the rope. Okay, so how would I do this? I think what I would do would be to write it this way. The mass times the acceleration in the x direction is going to be the sum of the horizontal components of all the forces. Okay, so let's see. We've got the force of friction, so that's minus force of friction. That's only in the x direction. And then I've got the force of the rope. I've got to take plus the force of the rope, the x component of the force of the rope. Okay. Uh, quite often I do that right at the beginning. I would say, well, here's fx, f rope x, and here's f rope y, and I would remove that vector. Okay. So I've replaced the force of the rope by its two components which I can calculate from the angle and the magnitude of F rope. And then MAY is going to be the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and that's going to be equal to the force of the ground up. It has no X direction, minus the force of gravity, minus the force of the weight of the person sitting on top, and then plus the force of the rope, or the component of the force of the rope in the upward direction. Okay. So I've got here two equations to describe the two components of the acceleration of the object.